accounting. As far as your audit goes, we issue a report and you guys sign a gap waiver, issue a report on the regulatory basis uh, under the Kansas Municipal Accounting and Audit Guide, uh, which in essence is a cash basis um, type of accounting with accounts payable and encumbrances recorded as well. Um, so you do track some AR, you do track some prepaid expenses, and we discovered this year you also track your accrued vacation um, as part of your records. Uh, none of those are allowed and are required under the KMAG regulatory basis. So we always back those out. Um, and discovering the accrued vacation buried in there this year, um, we had a prior peer adjustment to remove that from your beginning unencumbered cash and your activity. Um, that is a footnote only requirement for the regulatory basis versus in the, in the past you've had it recorded. Um, there's no really net effect of anything. It's just a tracking method of you're tracking your vacation um, for your employees. But um, it's not required and not allowed to be reported on your financial statements. It is a note in the financial statements. So, um, so if you have any questions on that, um, I'll answer those now. Otherwise, I'll jump into the audit report. Not seeing any questions. Okay, wonderful. So the audit report on pages one through three, the letterhead pages. Um, that is the auditor's opinion. This is what my responsibility is. Um, are basically these three pages. Uh, the rest of this audit report, the financial statement, the notes, the schedules in the back, the, um, the internal controls within the city, all responsibilities of management and the council as far as going through and tracking everything. Um, on page two, that's, that's basically page one. Page two, um, I did note that you um, have a regulatory basis of accounting. You, you do the gap waiver every year. Um, the first few paragraphs on page two do discuss that you have an adverse opinion on gap as required language per the regulatory basis of the KMAG. Um, don't worry about that. Um, the, the real important paragraph is the third bolded section down where you have an unmodified opinion on the regular, ba regulatory basis of accounting. That's the highest level. Um, that's what you guys are looking for. Um, so everything's golden and, and wonderful. So um, to continue on the information on the next couple paragraphs, uh, discuss the schedules in the back and that you do come do, you do show a comparative information in the back showing 17 and 18, 2017, 18 information as far as summarized 17 information on your schedules. Going on to your sole statement uh, what, from which we opine on on page four and five, uh, this is a summary statement of your receipts and your expenditures and your cash. It basically starts with cash balances, uh, your activity during the year and your ending cash. Um, and it shows all your funds that you, you guys track. Um, the one thing we look at here uh, you guys easily point out is in your ending unencumbered cash balance and your ending cash balance, you want to go through that and see if there's any negative numbers, um, any negative ending cash. Um, if you had negative cash at any point in time, or specifically at year end, we're looking at here, you'd have a cash violation. Um, you do not have any negative amounts, so that is wonderful. It's an easy thing to check as far as activity goes. After that, pages six through about 20, I believe, are your footnotes. Um, again, nothing new or strange um, due to, you know, as far as new activity goes. Um, I just want to point out on page 15 is your schedule of long-term debt. Uh, you did issue a temp note during the year. You paid off a geo bond, and it looks like in the near future you'll have a few other bonds that will be paid off um, as far as activity goes. You did have a, another geo bond issued in... 2019, I don't have the what, year, what, what month, but you have another geo bond issued subsequent to year end and before we issued this uh, that we have noted on page 20 as a subsequent event, uh, but no significant changes as far as activities go other than, other than that. Um, last thing in detail I kind of want to discuss and go over is on page 21. This is your summary schedule of actual and budget of your budgeted funds compared to your actual expenditures. Um, this only shows your funds that are actually budgeted compared to the, the final budget, whether it was original or amended budget. Um, in the far right-hand column, it has a, a variance, whether it's over or under budget. Uh, what we're looking for there is all to have under budget numbers. Um, if you didn't, you'd have a budget violation um, based on all your funds that you have budgeted. Uh, you did not spend more than what you budgeted, so there is no budget violation within the city during 2018. So, uh, The rest of the report in the back is a detailed analysis of your funds compared to budget. Um, for both the 2018 year and the summarized for 2017. Um, and then the very last schedule is your agency funds, which just shows your beginning cash, your receipts, disbursement, any cash on the very last page for your few agency funds that you do have. So, 
with that, are there any questions on the report? Does anybody have any questions? Not seeing any. Wonderful. Ben? I had to make a motion to receive and file the 2018 financial audit. And George. I'll second the motion. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And that motion passes 8 0. Thank you. That brings us to item five, which is consider an approval of a one year extension to the three year audit services agreement with James Gordon and Associates. D. In 2016, proposals for audit services were received from four qualified reputable, reputable firms. At that time, staff recommended approval of a three-year proposal from James Gordon and Associates, citing the firm as being the best qualified on the basis of demonstrated competence and qualification for the type of services required and reasonable fees for service. Council approved staff's recommendation. The audit of the 2000, 2018 financial statements that was just completed was the last year of that three-year agreement. Due to new staff and key positions, a proposal for a one-year extension was requested from the firm. The proposal received is $16,700 for the regular audit and $3,500 for each major program if a single audit is needed. A single audit is required only if an entity has federal expenditures during the year of $750,000 or more. The fees proposed for the 2019 audit are equal to those charged for the 2018 audit. So I'd be glad to address any questions if you have. Does anybody have any questions for D? Not seeing any. Ben? Sure, I do have one quick question, sorry. Okay. On there, um, so we look at extending it one more year, one and year. then in next year we would look for doing another RFP or whatever. Needed That's to the plan, yes. That. Okay. Um, I would go ahead and make a motion then that we uh, approve the proposal for a one-year extension of the agreement with James Gordon and Associates CPA, VA for the audit, uh, the 2019 financial statements at a cost of 16700 and an additional 3500 per major program if a single audit is needed to be funded from administration for 50% and water fund for 50%. Jim? I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Are there any discussion? Any questions? Not seeing any. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes 8-0. That brings us to item six, which consider a construction engineering contract with WSP on the 61st Street Bridge over Chisholm Creek project. Sean? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> as far as backgrounds, bids for the improvements on the 61st Street Bridge project were opened on May 22nd, and we received a total of two bids. First one was from Wildcat Construction for roughly about $4.4 million. The low bid was Donlinger & Sons for just over $4 million. The Kansas Department of Transportation considers the bids provided to be satisfactory when compared to the engineer's estimate and believes the contract should be awarded to the low bidder. If council concurs with uh, KDOT, it is being requested that they authorize the awarding of the contract by approving the attached resolution and then returning that to KDOT by the 14th of this month. Once KDOT receives the signed resolution, it will be approved by the Secretary of Transportation and then the contract will be awarded. The combination of bid items and construction engineering less a maximum amount of 4.6 million federal dollars or federal funds requires the city pay matching funds in the amount of $921,000. That's our 20%. Uh, the $921,000 will be paid using temporary financing subsequent to reimbursement with the proceeds of future bond sales. Staff recommends approval of the resolution. Okay, does anybody have any questions for Sean? Jim? Just as a reminder, I'm, re I'm remembering this came in lower than we originally ended. Substantially. Yeah. Uh, it was, the engineer's estimate, I believe, was right around $4.8 million. Uh, and our portion of it was going to be somewhere about $175,000 more. So nine twenty one is a good number for us. Yeah, kind of like that. Well, having that stated, I would move that uh, we approve the construction engineering contract with WSP in the amount of 921000 for the 61st Street Bridge over Chisholm Creek project. Tom? I'd second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Not seeing any. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
and that motion passes 8-0. That brings us to item 7, which is consider an ordinance establishing a consolidated street and highway fund. D. The city currently budgets street maintenance in two different funds, the street department within the general fund and the st uh, special streets and highway fund. This creates some difficulty in budgeting and spending as expenditures must be strategically allotted to the two funds to avoid overspending one of the budgets. The Kansas statutes, under Kansas statutes, cities are allowed to adopt an ordinance to combine the street funding and expenditures into one consolidated fund. Consolidation would eliminate the need for staff to determine which budget should be charged for any particular item and more clearly reflect the city's total annual maintenance of streets as all expenditures would be tracked in one fund. Since the amount of the state gas tax revenue the city receives is not sufficient to fund all the street maintenance costs, a transfer from the general fund to the consolidated fund would be budgeted annually to provide the additional funding necessary to cover that deficit. The transfer would not cost the city any additional money. However, due to state law requiring that both the transfer from the general fund and the full amount of the expenditures in the consolidated fund be budgeted, the amount of expenditures in the budget would increase. Sean and I have discussed this and we feel like, you know, with good communication through the budget process, the public would understand that it's not more money to us. Does anybody have any questions? Tom? No, I was going to make a motion, but I didn't get there first. <laughs> ben. Yeah, second, and just quick question on there. So by doing this, so this would also ease work the workload on staff by having one consolidated fund rather than trying to work between the two to figure everything it, out, correct? It shouldn't impact them at all. Are you talking about? From an accounting standpoint. Oh, from an accounting standpoint, it, it'd ease be the much burden. easier. Yes, yes. So it makes sense then if it's not going to be an additional cost and it's going to ease the workload, I would be all in favor of that. Okay. okay. Tom, would you go ahead and read that motion? Yeah, I would make a motion that we approve uh, an ordinance 1064-2019 uh, establishing a consolidated street and highway fund. Ben, did you second that? Yes. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Not seeing any discussion. D, would you call the roll? John and Hare. Aye. George Glover. Aye. Ben Salceda. Aye. Melvin Kerr. Aye. Tom Jones. Aye. George Caps. Aye. Brandy Bailey. Aye. Jim Schrader. Aye. And that ordinance passes 8 0. Thank you, D. That brings us to item 8, which is consider an ordinance amending the provisions of Chapter 8, Article 1 of the Municipal Code pertaining to the procedures of attaining compliance and abating nuisance issues. Doug? Mayor and Council, uh, uh, staff, which is the Police Department, Code Enforcement, uh, the Administrator, uh, and I uh, have discussed trying to streamline and, and make a little bit more efficient our, our nuisance processes. Um, this is kind of bite one of the apple. Uh, in Chapter 8, uh, Article 1 is the general nuisance provisions, and there are about two or three other chapters that I'll probably deal with in the next months uh, and make some further changes in those consistent with what we're doing here. Uh, but at present in, in Article 8, uh, Chapter 8, Article 1, the general nuisance provisions of our municipal code, um, there are several outdated references. And, and the one that's kind of most evident that you probably saw when you looked at the red line version is it, we now have code enforcement officers and there's a lot of references to compliance officers. So those have all been cleaned up. Um, there's some other language where they'll use the pronoun he uh, kind of in, 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 uh, to, to make ourselves current and politically correct, it's he or she, and so that's been added a, at a few places. And there are some references also to the Board of Health. Um, uh, I think down the road we might discuss the Board of Health and its, its involvement in nuisances, um, and I, I have some suggestions, and I, I, and, but I haven't spoken with, with Sean in depth about that, but for right now, the few references that, they, that, that exist in uh, Article 1, I think, can be taken out uh, because they, they really don't refer to any action. They just refer to the Board of Health as being some overarching entity. And uh, that's not, I don't think, consistent with the way we're operating right now. We have the police department code enforcement, and they're doing the work. Um, uh, there also were some changes to attempt to streamline the process, do away with some unnecessary steps uh, that I think slowed us down and made it difficult to get uh, 
voluntary compliance and, and made it especially difficult when we had to go through the entire process for involuntary compliance with the idea of then uh, assessing the costs ultimately down the road. Um, I think that this, these relatively small changes in this article and then the ones down the road will certainly make it possible for our code enforcement officers to uh, operate more efficiently and, 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 and in not any less friendly way with our citizens when they try to obtain voluntary compliance, uh, but more efficiently when they have to either go to court or initiate abatement by the city. Uh, as it stands now, those, those procedures and those uh, paths have been kind of inordinately long and we're trying to shorten them. Um, so I would, uh, I would recommend that you adopt these relatively minor changes to uh, Chapter 8, Article 1 with the idea of uh, gaining some efficiencies uh, in our uh, code compliance and dealing with nuisances. I, I did fail to mention, and it's noted in the uh, summary, uh, there was an increase in the fines. Uh, the maximum fine for a violation uh, of these nuisance ordinances as it stands now is $100. Uh, that has been raised to $200. Uh, and uh, that's a reflection of uh, the real work that goes into this uh, from our code enforcement officers, the amount of time they have to spend and the amount of effort. Uh, and so I think that's appropriate. Okay, George? <clears throat> well, I don't know where to start on this, but I'm opposed to this and only part of it. And the part in section five where it comes to the suppression or the abatement or suppression of nu nuisance, it says in here that uh, the city or its authorized representative is hereby authorized to enter into or up on any premises. Now my home is a premise and the city is not authorized to enter into that. They would have to have some real probable cause. Look, this goes back to British law, you know, and our Fourth Amendment. You know, a man's home's his castle, and even the king cannot enter without permission or a warrant. And yet this says that they can just enter in, and that's just wrong. I could never support that. It's existing. Well, that, that's existing code provision. I really didn't make any changes in that. Um, if, even if it is, counsel, that's wrong. You can't enter into my house without my permission or warrant. If you do, you're gonna get sued. And I don't disagree with that. Um, so I, 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 can, I, I can address that one of two ways. I can change it and put warrant language in there, or I can delete it altogether. It's really up to the council. And I really think it should, because at our last meeting, when we had the presentation of, this was the police department under Chief Phil Boston, there was a picture of, of the code enforcement. So I would make a very good case a first-year lawsuit and could make a case that that code enforcement officer is an agent of that police department. And they answer to the supervision of the police department. And when you're letting them enter in upon our premises, uh, you're leaving us wide open because what they see and do goes right back to the police. If the chief or one of the supervisors asks them a question, uh, they answer to them, and I'm sure they're going to get a straight answer. And somehow I see a real... And I'm speaking from the heart. I, I see a real danger here. In this country today, we are losing our constitutional rights one by one. They're just being nibbled away. And I see this as a violation of it. I understand the Fourth and Fifth Amendment. Like, it goes to the Fifth, too. Because if they come to my house and want to enter, and I say, no, you're not coming to my house, and then it goes into the Fifth Amendment because then I could be arrested for for uh, obstruction. And, you know, I see some real wrong in the language of this. In, in my 12 years that I've been uh, city attorney dealing with the prior uh, code compliance personnel and then even with Jennifer and, and the current uh, enforcement people, uh, there's never been any attempt to enter premises without the consent of the property owner. And, and were somebody to ask me if they were authorized, my advice would have been no, uh, we need to get a warrant to do that. Uh, so I would be glad to, if you want to make any motions with respect to the remainder of, of this uh, ordinance, uh, to have 809, uh, instead of it making changes to code enforcement officer, just have it deleted 
Well, it could be because as I, as I look down the road, I trust these guys. I know these people. I trust them. But I'm looking out for the people. What's coming down the road? Someone could look at that and say, oh, our code enforcement officer, they can go in there. And I could see, I could see, a, uh, I could see a, a real opportunity to, to trample on somebody's rights here. It's there. And that's what I'm elected for, to, to defend these people's rights. Well, it's been there for several years, long before I got here. But my, again, my point is, for the 12 years that I've been here, there's never been any attempt to do that. I, I take your point, and the solution I'm suggesting is that we delete 8109 in its Council, entirety. Council, there, there was some pretty blatant violations took place a few years ago. I wouldn't go into them here, but I'd be happy to talk to you about it in private. But uh, I, I, I have concerns. So, George, uh, he agrees with you. Yeah, so I understand. do you want to remove that? Would you be in support of yeah, Yes, removed? because I firmly believe okay. that code enforcement officer is an agent of the police department. Okay. Ben? Sure, for the purpose here of just of addressing both here, we obviously we want to make these changes that are needed, that Doug has presented, that need to be updated. Um, I would be in favor of just uh, tabling it till next meeting with the corrected changes to include the warrant. Uh, verba uh, verbiage in there. I appreciate uh, uh, it, Councilman it, Caps's vigilance on this, and I know it's not a. It's not necessary. To, I th it's not necessary to include the warrant provision in there. I think it's more appropriate to take it out. There still exists, without that being in there, the ability of the police department through code enforcement to obtain a warrant uh, from the courts to to get access. So, I, so that's I, always that's always there, whether it's set out here expressly or not. So I think to, to kind of ease the concerns that uh, Councilman Capps has and if anybody else has, it'd be easiest to, and, I, and we can do that. We'll bring it back at the next meeting. Just delete in its entirety 8109. Okay, I would make a motion then that we table this until next meeting and, and have the verbiage redone to, to match what's been stated. Okay, thank you, Councilman. Is there a second? George. I'll second that motion. And I would say thank you, Council. I appreciate it. John? Uh, in, in doing that, I guess in 8109, but it looks like 8108 under Section 5, 8, 8108A, um, there, the, it also has the part that I think, I'm not sure if George mentioned that one direct, but it also ends that he could go in and do an inspection. I caught that right. Maybe I slid down too far. Authorized to enter, yeah. City or its representative is, is hereby authorized to enter into or upon any premises or established for the purpose of making thorough, uh, thorough inspection or examination where the nuisance exists. That, that is under Section 5 and then as 8-108A. Do you see that I'll make, one? That, I'll make that change. Too. That's where I was reading it was 8018A. Well, John, I never had a problem with, with upon. I understand the plain view doctrine. If, if they say it, <laughs> that's great. Go get it. But I, I'm talking about entering a man's residence. I'm talking about a man's home's his castle. That's the part I'm concerned about. Yeah, and I, I'm wondering if maybe some of this verbiage is, is more, it's not spelled out very well, so I, I, I do agree with you, but I'm wondering if they're more like meaning um, areas like a, a shed or, a, you know what I mean, something that is not part of right. the curtilage of a house. Sure. <clears throat> but the attorney can sort through that and clean that up for us. Good point. Doug, do you feel like you got a good knowledge of what the council wants? I do. Okay. All right. We got a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes 8 and 0. That brings us to remarks, and we'll start with Jen. I have no remarks tonight. Brandy? I have no remarks tonight. George? Uh, this government remarks? Yeah. I had two complaints today, very vivid complaints about um, Jardine Park, about people pulling in there, young kids, young people, pulling in there doing wheelies and throwing gravel. It's been happening. I've, I've had this complaint before. And late at night, people sitting over smoking marijuana, and it's not hard to, you know, the south wind, the, the uh, 
wind blows the smell over. And I don't know if I have a good answer to it. At one time, I asked for the park to be the parking lot to be paved, and I guess there wasn't the money for it. But they throw gravel and stuff, and uh, they hit in houses. I I don't have an answer. I just I would just make the council aware, aware that uh, the complaints are there, and it is a real complaint. All you could do is walk over and look and see where they're doing the wheelies, <coughs> and. Uh, I don't know unless you close the parking lot off and make them walk in like you do the rest of the parks. The neighborhood, I'm talking about the neighborhood parks, not McLean. Okay. But that's about all I have. All right, Tom? I don't have anything. I have nothing. Ben? Sure, just a couple uh, things here real quick. Um, I want to say thank you to Stephen, he's gone now, but all the work going in for the 4th of July celebration uh, for council. Member Bailey for the work in getting the uh, um, the beauty pageant going there on that. Also, just a reminder: there, the summer coming up, you're seeing an increase, I'm sure, uh, with just petty vandalism, theft issues, or whatever. So just be vigilant with your belongings out and about there in your driveway or whatever the case might be. Uh, make the job a little easier for our law enforcement there. Uh, we do appreciate all the work that they're doing. So thank you for that. But that's it. George. Yeah, and kicking off our community events this weekend is our annual fishing derby, uh, 11th annual, so we want all the folks to come out. It's free to the public. Um, we're expecting another big crowd this year. It's from 9 to 11 at Chisholm Point Pond on North Grove. Um, it's free. It's open to the public, and we don't exclude anyone. It's open to all ages, uh, so come on out. Also want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day coming up as well. Thank you. Okay, John. I have nothing. Mayor, thank you. I uh, would make a motion we adjourn. And Ben? Second. Okay, we got a motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that passes 8-0. Thank you.